Sorry about the uh, glass reflectors. I noticed that if I actually put my head down, it stops the light from coming through. So it might be slightly annoying for you. Um, and it's sort of a little bit darker outside today. So sorry about the video quality, but at the very least you have my wonderful audio. So this week, if you have a look actually at the modules, it says that uh, we're also looking at origins of conflict resolution in module 4.2. Don't confuse this with origins the way that you're looking at it in your conflict report. Um, origins in your conflict report, as I've already spoken to you about in week two mainly, is about how the conflict originated. Tell me the story. You know, what happened? What started it? When did it start? You know, a summary, obviously. So when we're talking about origins of conflict resolution this week, what we're talking about is the origins of it as a field of study because it's multidisciplinary. It brings in, uh, you know, psychology, international relations, you know, a range of different disciplines. So why and, and how did it come about and where? And, you know, originally uh, conflict resolution as a term wasn't really involved. So international relations originally used to really be about conflict and how we manage it in terms of a very realist approach to the world, you know, battles between nations, for example, uh, issues that happen between states, uh, struggles for power relations. So conflict resolution in many ways came about because we had to look at conflict and peace and solutions in very different ways. You know, there's been a growth of ethnic and civil wars, particularly since the breakdown of the Cold War, since decolonization, um, the reattribution of boundaries in a lot of different developing nations. So we've seen new kinds of wars. We've also seen the advent of uh, new kinds of conflicts, like I said, in terms of civil and tribal conflicts, but also conflicts over resources and the environment, for example, has been a much bigger issue. And even poverty has come under the spotlight a lot more. So how does that weigh into conflict? So simply as scholars started to draw their attention to different issues that seemed pertinent for the day, uh, you find that new fields of research emerge and that's where conflict resolution comes from. Now in terms of uh, your actual assessment, I would say this week is really important um, if you're looking at right down in essay three there is a question that talks about generations of conflict uh, resolution and conflict studies. It's very much a theoretical question if you like that type of thing, looking at the history of our uh, area of research, you might be interested in that. Um, it's also so you know yourself where it comes from, where this field fits. You know, a number of you are from international relations, for example, but also from cr criminology and a range of other social sciences. So how does it intersect? Because some people get confused at first. Oh, is this international relations? What is it? So it's understanding how it brings a few different fields together and also who the main thinkers and scholars are. So every area, every field of scholarship will have a few names, you know, like Burton or, you know, Galtung that are really uh, quite essential to that field. And that tells you something about the type of slant that is taken. So when you listen to any video recordings, for example, of Galtung, you know immediately uh, where he leans and what type of tendencies he has. Okay, so that's just talking around this week a little bit, but uh, I know that you'll all be in the heart of preparation for assignment one. So, you know, we have talked about origins, uh, we've talked about actors, we've talked about sources, and these areas are also covered in weeks two and three of the modules. So my advice is make sure you're very familiar with weeks two and three of the modules. Listen to my weeks two and three videos. Uh, like I said, this is a compliment, it's not uh, replacing your reading. Uh, do the essential readings for those weeks. You have to do some of your own independent research around one of the five case studies you're choosing. But what you're really doing is trying to understand the theories and the models in weeks two and three. That's the most important and apply them to your case study. So, you know, it might be you're talking about correlates of war or the Uppsala conflict data project. And then you're saying, you know, for example, in my case, we see that there's been this many um, battleground deaths. This would... Uh, mean that it's it's classified as a war according to correlates of war. So reference that sort of research. You might be talking about sources. So you're arguing that there's ethnic and religious uh, sources of the conflict. And so draw on those essential readings from week three and actually talk about ethnic and religious sources of conflict in general a bit more. What do scholars say about that? And then just say, for example, we see in Rwanda, um, you know, and then start to look at your evidence. 
Uh, with actors, you want to try and limit it to around five categories of actors, no more. Um, there are ways you can do that. Like you might think, well, I've got a list of 20 actors here. But you might find they come under, you know, paramilitary or the Rwandan side of the conflict or the Tutsi side or international organizations or, you know, other countries that intervene. So try and lump it together a little bit because it's only 1,500 words. It'll go like that. And when you do that, talk about their motivations uh, and how they contributed to the conflict. Don't just simply say, here's this actor, um, you know, they helped sign a peace agreement, out you go. You know, don't, don't just have a kind of inventory because that's not meaningful in a report. So with this report, you're pretending that you're advising, let's say, the Foreign Affairs Minister and he wants to know what happened, how did it happen, where are we at, and who's involved in this conflict, you know, because he wants to consider what Australia's response is going to be. And so you're using headings, that's what a report is. Don't get too caught up with the example in your student resources. What you need to really get from your example is it's different from the flow of an essay. You're categorizing information under headings. Those headings can be meaningful to you. What I would expect to see on pretty much most reports is an executive summary, uh, a table of contents, a introduction, then subheadings, this is where you can make some choices, what subheadings are meaningful. You might go origins, actors, sources, but you could, you know, break it up into different headings and have different subheadings under it. So, you know, it needs to make sense and it needs to relate, obviously, to the assignment task and instructions. And then I would expect to see a conclusion, how you sum it up in the end. So introduction, you're always usually telling me something about the structure of what you're about to say in your report. Conclusion, your final comments. Uh, and then a reference list. So that's what I would expect to see. Executive summary, table of contents, introduction, your headings and subheadings, conclusion, reference list. That's the report and references using Swinburne Harvard throughout. So please continue to jump on to the Q&A thread and you can email me a plan with some ideas. I won't read actual drafts, but, you know, one page with um, ideas under those headings. Make sure you've done some of your weeks two and three reading first so that our conversation makes the best sense. Uh, and, yep, yeah, that's about it. Uh, the collaborate session also, uh, if you didn't get along to it, please listen to the recording. That's really important. And there are slides also posted on the um, Assignment 1 Q&A thread as well as a recording. Thank you everybody and good luck with your first assignment task. I look forward to it and hopefully it will inspire you on to your next assessment tasks um, and just ongoing learning around the field of conflict resolution and how to apply it to case studies.